Hello, my brush lads, lasses, and everybody in between. My name is Tyler, and I'm here to bring you yet another Commander Deck Tech. This one is very special, as it's the first in a series of four I'll be putting out over the next few weeks, dedicated to a very good friend of mine, David, or at SugarDogster on Twitter. He's been a monumental help in my quest to foil out my prize to King Ghidorah deck, and since he and his kids are such fans of the game, I'm dedicating four brews to them. Thanks, David. I hope you enjoy this. For today's deck, we'll be looking at one dedicated to David himself, and that's Maronar, a 2-3 rat rogue for three black black. Maronar gives all rats in play fear, meaning they can only be blocked by black creatures and artifact creatures. He also has tap, sacrifice a rat, make X 1-1 one, one black rat creature tokens where X is the number of rats you control. This build goes a couple of different ways, most of which are built around our rat of choice, Rat Colony. Rat Colony is a 2-1 rat for 1 in a black that gets plus 1 plus 0 for each other rat you control. It also comes with the caveat of letting us have any number of rat colonies in our deck, bypassing the singleton rule. For the purpose of this deck, we'll be using 25 copies. So big deal, why one rat colony when it doesn't boost toughness at all? making our swarm of rodents so easily killable. Simple, we want them to die. Sure, we can theoretically kill our opponents through pure combat damage, and one of our win cons does focus on that, but killing our rats when they have high power is also the key to a few strategies. Let's take a look at the ways the deck can win, then we'll cover our basic support cards. So as I said, one of our go-tos will be killing our rats. In addition to Rat Colony, we have Pack Rat, which can make duplicate copies of itself. Ogre Slumlord is a 3-3 Ogre Rogue, a Roger, that gives us a 1-1 Black Rat when a non-token creature dies, and gives all of our rats Death Touch. Thrumming Stone is a legendary artifact that gives all of our spells Ripple 4, which means when we cast a spell, we may reveal the top 4 cards of our library. If any of the revealed cards share a name with the spell we just cast, we can cast those for free. Those free casts can then also trigger Thrumming Stone. This is by far the fastest and easiest way to get all of our rat colonies out of the deck and onto the field. Thornbite Staff is the real kicker if we want to kill by sheer numbers though. A 2 mana equipment that equips for 4, the staff says equipped creature has 2, tap this creature, deal 1 damage to target creature or player. And whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, untap this creature. It also equips for free to a shaman, but that, along with the pinging effect, don't really matter. What we want is that untap effect. See, if we have Marrow and at least two other rats in play, and Marrow is equipped with the staff, we can tap Marrow to sacrifice one rat and make two more, since he counts himself, leaving us up one rat from when we started. Since tokens go to the grave before they stop existing, or regular creatures just go to the grave, the sacrifice will also cause Marrow to untap, allowing us to then make infinite rats. From there, we can either wait a turn and swing with our horde, or if we have Altar of the Brood, a one mana artifact that mills our opponents each time a permanent comes into play for us, we can mill all of our opponents out at once. If that doesn't work, we can also sacrifice our rats to the Altar of Dementia, which is a 2-mana artifact that lets us sacrifice creatures for free to mill a player for that creature's power. Our giant rat colonies, or our army of infinite 1-1s, one -ones, can basically be used to mill opponents out then one at a time. Now, let's say that our mill strategy won't work. What's next? Well, we can fill our graveyard with all of our rat colonies, then exile our opponent's graves, and then reanimate all of our rats. Living End and Living Death are a pair of cards that do the exact same thing, except we can hard cast Living Death for 3 black black, while we can only suspend Living End for 2 black black, giving our opponents 3 turns to prepare. Both cards have every player exile all creatures from their graves, sacrifice all creatures they control, and then put into play all the creatures they originally exiled. If we stock ourselves with rat colonies, then get rid of our opponent's graveyards, we end up as the only one with creatures. Secret Salvage can exile a non-land card from our grave to search our library for any number of cards that share a name with the exiled card and put them into our hand. 
By exiling one colony, we can then grab all the remaining ones, then discard them at the end of our turn when we inevitably have more than seven cards in hand. Soul Guide Lantern and Crook of Commendation are a pair of artifacts that can exile every opponent's graveyard at once, while Deadly Rollick, Feed the Serpent, Final Death, Final Reward, Epic Downfall, and Braska's Contempt are single target removal spells that exile creatures. If we need to buy more time, or if someone is attempting to exile our graveyard, we have Bone Harvest and Grave Purge, two instants that can put any number of creatures from our grave on top of our library, then let us draw a card. In the off chance that we have no removal or are unable to target our opponent's creatures, we still have ways of getting rid of threats. Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebos are enchantments that make our opponents sacrifice a creature when any of ours die. If we need, we can use No Rest for the Wicked, which can sacrifice itself to return all creatures put into our graveyard this turn back into our hand. Our last important piece is Elspeth's Nightmare, a saga that, over the course of several turns, blows up a small creature, rips a non-land non-creature from someone's hand, and then exiles a single graveyard. With all the important moving pieces we have in the deck, it's also incredibly important that we have access to whatever we need when we need it. We can do this in two ways, either by drawing a lot of cards or by tutoring for exactly what we need. For card draw, we have Erebos Bleak Hearted, Altar's Reap, Village Rites, Ambition's Cost, Ancient Craving, Blood Divination, and Phyrexian Arena. With Erebos, we can pay two life to draw a card whenever a creature of ours dies, and we can pay one in a black and sacrifice a creature to give something else minus two minus one until end of turn. Altars Reap and Village Rites each draw us two cards at the cost of sacrificing a creature. Ambitions Cost and Ancient Cravings are identical sorceries that draw us three cards and lose us three life for three and a black. Blood Divination draws us three cards at the cost of sacrificing a creature, and Phyrexian Arena is an enchantment that draws us an extra card on our draw step in exchange for losing one life. An honorable mention, since it isn't exactly card draw, but gets us things off the top of our deck, is Bolus's Citadel. A legendary artifact for three black black black, we can look at and play the top card of our library at the cost of spells being paid for in life rather than mana. We can also tap it and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents to make each opponent lose 10 life. For tutoring spells, we have Rat Catcher, Vampiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor, Diabolic Tutor, and Grim Tutor. Rat Catcher is another roguer that has fear and, at the beginning of our upkeep, lets us search our deck for a rat, reveal it, put it into our hand. Demonic Tutor, Grim Tutor, and Diabolic Tutor each search up any card in our deck at sorcery speed and add it to our hand without having to reveal it. And Vampiric Tutor is a one mana instant that searches for any card, puts it on top of our library, and takes two life from us. Our last three non-land cards are Piper of the Swarm, who can make rats and sacrifice rats to mind control the creature permanently, Bantu's Monument to cheapen our black creatures and drain our opponents for one life each time we cast a creature spell, and Soul Ring, because it's Soul Ring. Our mana base is fairly simple. Since we're in mono black and mostly just need to worry about generating enough mana to do what we need to and tear through our deck as fast as possible. Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, turns all lands into swamps in addition to their normal types, and when combined with Cabal Coffers, can generate obscene amounts of mana. Cabal Stronghold can also generate tons of mana, but it only counts basic swamps, so it's a much less powerful version of the Coffers. Castle Lachthwain enters the battlefield tapped unless we control the swamp, taps for black, or can tap alongside one black black to draw a card and then make us lose life equal to the amount of cards in our hand. Crypt of Academe enters the battlefield tapped, taps for a black, or can be tapped alongside two generic to add black to our mana pool for each creature in our graveyard. Phyrexian Tower can either tap for a colorless or can sacrifice a creature to tap for black black. Myriad Landscape can grab us two basics from our deck, Swarmyard can regenerate a rat by tapping, and we round things off with a nice and easy 27 basic swamps. And there we have it, a fun and aggressive mono black rat deck. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tell me in the comments section below which you prefer, rat colony or relentless rats. Be sure to like and subscribe, and ring that little bell so that you never miss an upload. I've been Tyler, and I will see you all next time. Peace!